Hey everyone, it's Peter. I just wanted to hop in before this week's episode with two little notes about how you can get in touch with us. We've been saying from the beginning that if you want to send us a question or any other kind of note, then you can email us at askapriest at goodcatholic.com. Now, unfortunately, we had a technical glitch that prevented a portion of the emails to that address from actually reaching us. We just want to apologize for that and say that it has been completely corrected, but the problem went undetected for a while, and we don't have any way of knowing how many emails got lost. So, if you reached out to us by email and you didn't get a response from us saying that we got your message, then that means we didn't. So if that's the case, again, we're really sorry, and I want to invite you to send us your question or your note again. We love hearing from our listeners, and I know some of you have really important, really solid questions. We want to make sure we get to all of them. So again, if you emailed us in the last few months and haven't heard anything back from us, I invite you to just send that email again. Thanks. But I also want to announce that you can now send us voicemails. We've partnered up with SpeakPipe, a website which allows you to send us a little voice message from your phone or tablet or computer. So if you send us a message... We'll do our best to play it on the air and respond in an upcoming episode. Just go to speakpipe.com slash Catholic Coffee Talk and leave us a little message. It's really easy. It's really quick. You can send us your question that way, or if you just want to pop in and say hi, that works too. Again, that's speakpipe.com slash Catholic Coffee Talk, and we'll link that in the show notes. Now, on to the episode. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Catholic Coffee Talk, a podcast where in between sips, your Catholic questions are answered, and I have some sweet, sweet coffee. It's not sweet, it's actually just black coffee, oh. but it's sweet in, uh, I guess, experience? I don't know, what would you say about that? Yeah, in, on a, in a spiritual sense, it's sweet. <laughs> it's suavitas. There you as go. As the Latin goes. <laughs> um, hey, I'm your host, Father Brad Doyle, and I have with me our resident good Catholic, Peter Goan. Um, and somewhere out in the Ethernet and the clouds is is Alex Mersh, our in studio producer. Oh, I'm here. <gasps> oh, he's here. He's he there. speaks. Okay, guys, guess what? I, I went and visited my parish. Yeah, your new parish. Tell us about it. Yeah. So um, it was a weird experience. It was like I've I've been to St. Francisville many times. It's mm-hmm. a little town. It's on the Mississippi River. It's got some history. Um, it's, it's just cute little, it's got, um, I don't know, plantations and like ghost haunted ghost, uh, plantations where people go and they get off the, 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 the boats and stay uh-huh. there. I mean, I might have to do some exorcisms. I don't know, but, <laughs> um, but, and there's antique shops and like really cute little shops. So it's, it's a, it's like a tourist town. Yeah. You were telling us a bit about it last week and it sounded so beautiful. I'm jealous. Yeah. And like I've been there many times, but like driving in after your name the Passover place, it really is a special experience. Like the first time you roll into town, and it's not even like in a city. Like if I was a if I was assigned to Baton Rouge, like a I don't know Saint John Vianney in Baton Rouge. Yeah, it's like you're you're driving in, and you don't know where the boundaries start. Like right when you get there, so you're not driving into your parish. You're just driving to a parish. But like when you're going to St. Francisville, to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, it's on the hill, overlooking the town, overlooking the Mississippi, overlooking Bayou Sarah. You're driving in, you're like, these are my people. The, that's my coffee shop. That's, that's in my parish boundaries. That's my little bar right there. That person walking down the street, I don't know if you're Catholic or not, but guess what? You're mine. That, that sounds beautiful. Fun. I imagine it's a little bit like... Um, when I first went into our house after we bought it, like I knew what the yes. house looked like and it was totally empty, but it was just like something about being there, knowing that I kind of own it. Uh, cause I mean the bank owns it, but let's not talk about that. I mean, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's a very different experience because it's, you know, but in terms of just the, the being there for the first time in a new way, you know, cause you've been there before, but now that you're a pastor. Yeah. I can imagine how that's hey, every, every time like a, a little mouse comes out of the wall. Do you go, I have spiritual care over you, mouse. No, when a mouse comes out of the wall, I go, how did you get past the traps that I set specifically <laughs> to remove you from my presence? Nice. So that was my experience. Um, I met with a, well, actually I got there early, so I posted up at a coffee shop called, called Birdman, okay? And I, my goal was this. I'm going to do some work. I'm going to like do some work on this podcast. Uh-huh. I'm going to do some other stuff, call some food trucks for an event we have at the diocese. But I'm just going to post up with my collar on and see how many parishioners come up. And like three different people were like, are you the new priest? 
it was just so cool meeting them and talking to them. So um, I'm really excited, and it's going to be – and and I saw the rectory. The rectory is, like, recently redone. Um, there's, like, a guest room that I'm going to turn into a podcasting room and a putting room. So it's going to be podcasting equipment on one side, putting green on the other. I'm going to get dialed in both. Yeah, you're, you're really talking uh, Alex's language here. Yeah, Alex, yeah. you're a golfer? I mean, I wouldn't call myself a golfer. You're more of a golfer than I am. I don't know if I'm more of a golfer. Do you than have anyone. clubs? Yes. Okay, you're more of a golfer than I am. <laughs> we're gonna meet on a. We're actually gonna expense this. The prosecution, on good rests. Catholic, and we're going to meet at in Mobile and go to the Robert Trent Jones Trail and just like golf up the trail. It's gonna be awesome. If we have Father, to. I will be in Mobile tomorrow. When are you driving down? <laughs> actually, here's the deal. Here's the dealio. School's over. I don't know if we should be putting this on air, but <laughs> schools, school's over. We can cut it out. Uh, we're not cutting it out. It's good. School's over, and so I don't have to be at St. Thomas, so I'm going to TPC, Louisiana. You should drive over from Mobile, TPC, Louisiana, like where they play the, the Zurich Classic, 10 a.m., tee off, let's do it. Oh, that'd be amazing. I'm actually bringing my girlfriend home. Uh, yeah, well, We never talked about this. <laughs> It's a perfect time to talk about it on air. <laughs> What's your name? Her name's Mary. Uh, perfect name. Not perfect name, but great name. No, I mean, it's a good name. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty perfect. Yeah, it's... yeah. Um, but no, uh, I think last time we talked about me going out there to visit her, and then I never got ah. back to y'all. Or no, no, she was coming out for Easter, actually, to Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it went great. Um, now, going home. Well, I hope by the time this airs, y'all are still dating. If not, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a wound. You're gonna have to listen to this episode, and it's gonna it's gonna wound your heart. But you're gonna get through it because you're an upstanding Christian man who gets through difficulties even when you break up with Mary. <laughs> don't tell don't tell her that. She's gonna love that bomb well, out there. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a prophet. Maybe I'm not. If I'm not, then guess what? You just laugh at it. But if I am, then you think I'm really prophetic, and I just I just played the game. There you go, Father Brad just lobbing hand grenades out and. <laughs> okay well anyway i think that's enough banter i think it's time for <laughs> yeah, what's percolating what's percolating is where the questions percolating in your head get answers from the church's tradition peter read it so we got a question from barbara who asks i would like to know the process for returning to the catholic church i was raised catholic and was baptized had first communion and i was confirmed I've been married for 20, 29 years, but did not get married in the Catholic Church. I have not been to church in around 30 years. So, how do we get back in the church? First off, Barbara, welcome back. Like, look, you're coming back in. You want to come back in. There is a path. I'm super jacked that you want to come back in. So is Peter. So is Alex. And um, and and here, the good news is... Uh, we love that you're responding to God's grace. Yes. God's leading you. He's He's laying down prevenient grace for you. You responding. I don't know what happened. In fact, I was kind of praying about this when I was preparing for this, uh, Peter and Alex, that it would be so cool to hear a story. You know, a lot of times yeah. we hear people's questions and we don't know the story. Yeah, we don't know the context. Like what, we don't know what they're thinking exactly. Yeah, yeah. like what bar what brought Barbara back? I don't know. Maybe it's a process. So wherever you're at, Barbara. Praise God. Uh, thankful. F- we're thankful for whatever situation or person or experience has brought you back. Okay. So number one, and you probably know this, Barbara, or anyone else there out there who's been listening, like, maybe I'm thinking about coming back. Maybe I grew up Catholic or whatever. Uh, you have always been Catholic. So sorry if you thought you had left the church, but you hadn't. Sorry. Um, <laughs> as an initiated Catholic, regardless of what we do, or even if we leave the church, quote unquote, because people say, oh, yeah, I left the church. Um, maybe you're out of communion with the church. Maybe right. you're not in the state of grace to receive communion maybe, or whatever. Maybe not fully participating in the church, but you're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You hadn't been to church. You hadn't walked into the doors. But like you cannot undo your initiation. So like the sacrament of baptism and confirmation both do something called uh, an ontological change. They ontologically change your soul, which means they change its very essence. Um, it, it changes the substance. You know, like whenever you, let's say, get your hair cut, 
that's not an ontological change. It's a physical mm-hmm. change. Your hair gets shorter. But an ontological change would be completely changing what your hair is. Like it changes the substance. So um, very loose analogy. But your soul is changed at baptism and confirmation. So you become a different person. You can't go back. So no matter what you did, sorry about it. You didn't leave the church. Yeah. And that's that's, that's good news. <laughs> I know I said sorry about it, but it's just a, it's a phrase the Utes are saying. Or they say, sorry, not sorry, which is, um, which is another thing that I picked up as a high school. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I I don't keep up the lingo these days. Yeah. You don't strike me. I'm an an old man. The hippest, the hippest, coolest. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I became a teacher, I actually had to try to pretend I didn't know the lingo just so they didn't know how young I was. It helped. (laughs) <laughs> you were just in a you were in a, a like a amalgamous blob of agelessness yeah i was a 22 year old kid teaching 18 year olds and they had siblings older than me so i didn't want them to know that so i just pretended to not be in on the jokes hey i am but the joke's on me because now i have no idea what's going on i i i i, I come on come on light i'm lighting a chrism candle barbara let's see i think it worked i'm just gonna let it go Okay, it's lit. Barbara, number two. So number one is you never left the church. Number two, coming back is just a matter of doing what we are all called to do. So like the same thing I'm called to do as a priest, uh, same thing that Peter's called to do or Alex or the Pope, right? Pope Francis, he's called to do the same thing, which is come back to communion. Let's say we we mess up, we hurt the body of Christ, we sin, Mm -hmm. we go to confession and then we go to mass like straight up, that's what you're called to do, basically. So a confession might look different than a regular Saturday four months out from the last one confession. You know, let's say someone's regularly going Mm -hmm. once a month or every quarter or whatever. Uh, They might come to the Saturday before the Saturday vigil confession time. But um, I would suggest in your case, since it's been so long, you want to really give it the the energy and and, and prayerfulness and time necessary because you don't want, you know, five people behind you like trying to go to confession and you you're doing your best. You're you're throwing it all out there. You're giving it over because you want Jesus to forgive it. And then like they're like, what's going on? Like I had a I got to go, you know, got to go to Golden Corral. (laughs) Yeah, I I. Like two things you said there, Father. One, that <laughs> he liked you like two. You didn't like no, all. You didn't like all the crap. <laughs> no, I, there are two different things I want to harp on here. I like how you said that Barbara and anyone else in the situation is called to do the same thing we're all supposed to do, right? Repent, go to confession, stay close to the sacraments, especially mass, right? That it's at this point, it's a matter of kind of sort of sort of jumping back in, just getting back into it and um, acting as as a Catholic, as a Christian acting in accordance with that grace of the soul. Um, so I like that. But then I also, again, agree. You got to, in this situation, probably make an appointment and give it the time, give it the prayer, um, so that the priest can also give the attention that that you might need and that, that you deserve. Um, because, again, I think of that Saturday slot with the confession, um, that it can just be kind of quick. You know, it's, it's often people who are going more regularly, and it's sort of like, okay, this is what I did. And sometimes I did it, you know, I, I, I repent. And then it's like, okay, absolution, goodbye. Um, and that's that's great because we're, we're healing souls. Um, but I don't know if uh, it might be more emotional than that. And you might benefit from having the freedom of time um, with like that, that, with that priest. That, yeah, the yeah. freedom of that time, sort of one-on-one to, to be before... Uh, the, the minister of God in there. But I do want to say, if all you have is Saturday afternoon, just go. Just yeah. <laughs> disregard Sorry, not trying disregard to <laughs> everything I said. Just say like, Father Brad, sorry, but not sorry, I'm going. So, yeah. um, <laughs> yes. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up and I forgot what it was. Um, Mm, never mind. Moving on. Number right. three. Okay. So one, you never left the church. Two, it's easy to come back. You just go to confession and receive the Eucharist unless number three. And I don't know what your situation is. Um, it wasn't very many details. So you can apply this to you or, or what have you if it is your situation. There may be 
a situation with someone who's coming back to church, coming back to mass, coming back to the sacraments, coming back to confession, just want to get back in the groove, there may be a situation where a persistive uh, state is an obstacle to immediate return to communion, okay? Let me break that down. What does that mean? It means a state. So, like, like let's say somebody at some point, uh, I'm going to Angola. I'm actually the chaplain in Angola, and I, and I go and hear a confession, and one of the guys is like, yes, I murdered somebody. Well, that's not a persistent state of living. Like, that's some one action that happened maybe many years ago, and that mm-hmm. can be taken care of, forgiven, and, and move forward. But a persistent state is might be some situation that's continuing to occur right now. So uh, a, the biggest example of that would be um, marriage outside of the church. Right, so you're Catholic, you were baptized Catholic, you were confirmed, and you got married outside of the church without permission, possibly. So you broke marital form, and that marriage isn't sacramentally valid. Okay, so that would need to be addressed. And maybe it's as easy as we just didn't get married in a church because I had left the church, or my husband uh, was was opposed to it, or whatever, and now he's mm-hmm. come around. Or um, maybe it's as easy as just what's called a convalidation or a blessing of the marriage is the colloquial term, and and there's no other obstacles. You just convalidate the marriage or or radical sanation. <laughs> I'm throwing out all these crazy words, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why we use just bless the marriage. You right. get the marriage blessed. You go to their priest. Um, Maybe it's as easy as that, but maybe there's a situation where that civil marriage outside of the church was because someone else was previously married, maybe yourself, and there's an annulment process that needs to occur. Um, And that's a little more difficult, um, but there is a way. I want to leave this situation with this. Mm -hmm. You want to come back to church. You want to come back to communion. You want to come back to the sacraments. There's a path for us to start walking. You find your priest. And if that priest is like a doofus and is like, I don't want to deal with it or yells at you the confessional, guess what? Find another one because you deserve the sacraments. You deserve the Eucharist. You deserve to have your life laid out before the Lord and him say, return to me because there is a path forward. Even if it takes extreme virtue and, and chastity and decisions that are really hard there's still a path forward. The The Father's arms are open, so don't let the church stand in the way. Don't let a, a Dumbo priest stand in the way, and don't let um, your own you know, desire stand in the way for you receiving what God wants for you. Amen. I've got nothing to add because there's no way I could say that better. I, I like saying the term Dumbo priest. <laughs> Like, like, it's just, I don't want to be a Dumbo priest. If yeah. ever I'm a Dumbo priest, Peter, Alex, you have permission to call me that and punch me in the, the, the goosen. What's the goosen? The goosen's the nose. Oh. <laughs> okay. The goosen's the nose. Uh, I, okay. Um, anyway, I, after that, I think we need a little pick me up. We need a little bean of the week. We all need a little pick-me-up. Here's ours. Peter, what's your pick-me-up? Okay, so a while ago, I came across this book. It's just called Stories of the Saints by Carrie Wallace and illustrated by Nick Thornborough. And I don't know if you've ever seen this, Father. Oh, have you ever wow. come across yes, this? I have seen it. Yes, this yes. is, it's, it's like a, I don't know. I want to call it a children's book. It's probably good for like a, a middle schooler, you know, because uh-huh. it's, it's, um, not quite like a chapter book, but you know, long, long stories, but amazing, amazing artwork all yeah. throughout it, which is, it's striking. It's beautiful. Um, it's unique and, and contemporary without being like esoteric and irreverent. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. That's a hard balance, but yeah, right. it, 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 it avoids kitschiness. Do you know that term? Yes. Kitchiness? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just trivializing the faith. Absolutely. So I, I came across this a while ago, I think when it was first published and I petitioned um, the Catholic company here. I'm like, Oh, we need to start selling this. We need to, we need to get in touch with these, these publishers, this author. So we could start bringing this to people. Um, and I, I picked it up uh, recently just because I, you know, I, I've got a kid now, but I was also, I was doing um, another order and I was like, Oh, I'll get this book too. My child is six months old. There's going to be a long time before he can read this. <laughs> Or even I can read it to him, but I wanted to get it to make sure I had it, just you know, in case it goes out of print. And I really hope it doesn't, because this is an amazing, amazing book. It's Stories of the Saints by Carrie Wallace, illustrated amazingly by Nick Thornborough. 
Um, and I'll link to that because I, I, I just got my hands on it and I'm already like super excited for it. Do you think, do you think Nick Thornborough is related to the wild thornberries? You know, I have a feeling he isn't. I would say yes. Um, but I think, yeah, we'll have to take that one to court. <laughs> <laughs> He's related to the animated family. The of, animated of, Australian family. <laughs> was it Australia or South Africa? Oh, maybe they're South Africa. I thought it was Australian. Maybe it was Australian. All I know is he had a great mustache, and I just remembered that. But you, you should go check out that book. Uh, my bean of the week is anointing calls. Just random anointing calls. Like, do not be afraid out there to call a priest and call a priest early, right? Don't wait till the very final moments of someone's life. But like, if you know they're Catholic, your your parent, your grandparent, uh, maybe your parents have kind of left the church, but you know your grandparents are um, are Catholic. Maybe mm-hmm. you personally have left the church. I don't know why you'd be listening to this podcast, but but you're you're left the church, but your grandparents are Catholic and they would desire anointing. Um, call me. I've had a couple of situations this week. One situation where a woman called and said, you know, he's been gone from the church for a while, but, and I said, here's my question. She, Cause she called back and she said, "Never mind, don't come. And I was like, uh, hmm. here's my question. Do you think there's at all any chance he would want to receive the anointing of the sick before he passed away? And she goes, come right now. <laughs> and I was like, yes, that's what I'm talking Let's about. Let's do baby. it. And uh, so I showed up and did the anointing. And like today, I got a call. It was coming from St. Joseph because I left my iPad at the, the senior mass, the baccalaureate mass. Uh-huh. And I was calling and the chaplain um, called me and said, hey, there's someone in ICU. They're passing away. Can you go by? I'm like, I'm on my way. And like I just showed up. And just the privilege it is as a priest to like walk into people's lives. Like immediately they called mm-hmm. for a chaplain within 10 minutes. Like a priest just pops in. Just like almost kicks down the door. I mean, can you imagine? I I have been in situations with my grandparents and and different things, but like just the 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 privilege it is to be able to take care of people in their most uh, vulnerable moments and right before the death to prepare their soul, no matter where they've been or what they've done or how long it's been since they've yeah uh, been to church. That was my pick me up, and I'm jacked about it. And I'll tell you, I can't. I, I said I'll tell you, but I can't tell you actually how comforting it is for for us laity to know that in our final moments, hopefully, God willing, they're peaceful moments. That 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 we can get that too. That there are men out there who are willing to just drop whatever the, whatever they're doing to come and minister to us in our in our final most vulnerable moments. So um, obviously, God yeah, willing, it's like a long way off. But I, it's such a comfort knowing that for me. And for my loved ones, that, that that will be available and that there there are people like you who are willing to do that. So. Yeah, like just as an insight, like once I was at CrossFit mm-hmm. and I was deadlifting like 275 for reps and, and, <laughs> Flex then, on us. and I get a call, my phone goes off and and I just le- I obviously I left CrossFit. Like I right. left, I said, but I, I, I told the nurses because I think they got the nurses to call is like I'm in workout clothes, but it doesn't matter. I'm coming. I'm a priest. And they were like, cool. And I like walked in. They were like who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I am the priest. I come to do the anointing. They were like, sweet, cool. But uh, like, we'll, we'll come, you know, you just call us. I, I so, feel like that's, that's one of the few instances where I feel like having the full cassock would actually be more useful than the, the black clerics where you could just throw it on over everything else. Absolutely. The only like remnant of CrossFit would be like the, uh, the, the sneakers. Or something. Yeah. The <laughs> that's awesome. Well, You've been listening to Catholic Coffee Talk with me, Father Brad, and our resident good Catholic, Peter Gone. Coffee Talk is brought to you by The Catholic Company and is part of the Good Catholic Podcast Cooperative. If this episode has blessed you, you can find more content at goodcatholic.com backslash podcast. As always, we ask that you leave a review, a rating, share the pod with a friend, or simply pray for us and our mission. If you have a question of your own that has been percolating, shoot us an email at askapriest at goodcatholic.com. We will possibly feature it on a future episode and answer to the best of our ability. To quote the psalmist David himself, taste and see that the Lord is good. Continue to drink deeply from our great faith. We'll talk next week. Peace.